All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. And tonight we're going to be talking about a machine that helps to support a lot of the other machines in the shop. And if you haven't discovered them yet, guys, 3D printers are invaluable when it comes to uh, working with lasers and CNCs and making things. Uh, whether you're using them for prototyping, making tools, making hose adapters, there's countless, countless uses for a 3D printer. And to be honest, you don't have to have a whole lot of skill these days to be able to pull off printing some really cool stuff if you get the right equipment. And so far, I have finally found the machine that was made for me. So stick around and I'm gonna to talk to you about my adventure into 3D printing and where we're at today. All right guys, so shortly after getting into lasers and CNC's, a lot of you guys were telling me about these things called 3D printers, which is basically where you can take a roll of plastic that strongly resembles weed eater string and make it into cool stuff using this machine that's controlled by a computer and melts it and puts it in shapes. That's the gist of it. But guys, when I got into 3D printing, I discovered it's a lot more complicated than that. There's a whole lot of things, whether it's bed adhesion or, you know, leveling the bed, uh, having the right extruder temperature, extruder speeds, uh, retraction. There's a whole lot of things that go into 3D printing that if you're not willing to sit down and learn it, you're going to struggle with. And that's where I was with 3D printing. I was having to cram and having to learn all these things. But the need for a 3D printer in my shop was that to where it was worth the learning. It was worth studying because I was able to make cool brackets like this to hold things in the shop. If I needed an adapter for a vacuum or for dust collection, I could just go whip up a, an adapter and print it. You know, if, if I had a laser and I needed some parts to help with cable management or to protect little sensitive pieces of uh, limit switches, I could print out my little, you know, make my parts and print them out. And so even though I wasn't the professional at 3D printing, I had enough of a value in my shop that I wanted to have one. Uh, so I went out, I bought what I thought was the best machine that I could afford, which was an Ender 3, and I went down the rabbit hole that is printing. Now, fast forward six months later, I've gotten a lot better at it, but I've gotten into a machine now that takes all of the guesswork and limits the knowledge that I have to acquire. So if you're one of those guys that's wanting to get into 3D printing, but you really don't want to learn all the sciencey stuff about it, you just want to get a machine that you can use and make things and do what you want to do without having to learn all the ins and outs, I think I found a better solution, and that is the Bamboo Labs. I've started out with the A1, and uh, I will say, guys, coming from where I was to the Bamboo Labs A1, it is night and day. So for a little over a month, guys, I've had the Bamboo Labs machine that they sent out to me to test, in all fairness. Uh, they decided to help me out. They sent me the machine, and I've been testing it for about a month now. And I've really been trying to come up with how to present this video. I don't want to make just another 3D printing video, guys. There's plenty of those out there. Just like with the lasers and stuff, I try to offer a unique view into whatever it is. And with the 3D printers, a lot of people out there, I think, would benefit from the 3D printers. That, let's say you don't necessarily know how or care to learn how to design a file for 3D printing. All you really want to do is be able to download one of those cool files and print it and use it in your shop. This machine will make life really, really easy for you and really, really simple. Now, we're going to start out. I'm going to show you how simple it will make your life. <laughs> by sitting over here in my shop my 3d printer is in the house but we're going to sit down over here and i'm going to walk you through the steps of recreating one of these little hold downs from carbide 3d that is made for my cnc now i've got quite a few of these things but i have had a couple of mishaps and you know may have accidentally shaved the ends off of a couple of them uh, luckily because these things are plastic or 3d printed or whatever uh, it doesn't hurt the machine, but luckily for me, 
Carbide allows anyone who owns the machine or anybody that does it for that matter to download their file and print one of these to use with your CNC. So today, to demonstrate to you guys how easy a 3D printer can kind of move into your life and make things easier for you, we're just gonna pretend that I have absolutely no ability to design a file, and we're gonna go download this from Carbide and create a few of them for the CNC. So uh, let's move over to the computer. I'm gonna show how easy it is. All right, guys, so the first thing is go over to Carbide's website. I'm just gonna drill down and go into their library. They actually have a lot of little cool parts that you can download and print here uh, for your CNC. And uh, among those, of course, are the little hold downs. And that's what we're after today. Uh, like I said, these things are not gonna be as strong as the ones that come with the machine because I'm printing them out of PLA, uh, not ABS or, or whatever. But that's something that definitely could be done is I could print them out of a harder, more rugged material. But for the purpose of demonstration, we're just gonna run these out of PLA, try them out, see how they do. Uh, so I downloaded the file. Basically, once you download the file, you just open it in the Bamboo Labs software, and it's gonna automatically place it on the plate for you. Uh, if you want more than one, you will need to uh, click on that guy and replicate it. But just to kind of give you an idea, uh, there's a lot of settings in here, and guys, you can really get in the weeds on some of these settings. I'm slowly trying to learn them. Uh, there's like way more settings than you need to be messing with unless you're confident. And as you progress, uh, into things you can you can customize and design this in many many different ways I tend to just run with the automatic settings. I've had really good luck uh, As far as the the layer heights and stuff like that bamboo labs is kind of they've kind of got all the, the the presets in here set up pretty well You'll notice that you've got you know the ability to change the machine the type of a, a bed plate that you have a lot of different things that you can get into but the basics are guys you go in here to the preview uh, you've got this little interface that allows you to interface with the machine and then you've got your little notes section there in your project uh, but to get started we're going to right click on this guy there's a button in there called clone and we're just going to clone this thing make three additional copies of it and it's automatically going to place it on the work area and voila there we go uh, there's our three little clamps that we're going to be printing and I don't want them in black the last thing that I printed on the machine I printed in black and so that's why the black filament is currently selected so I'm going to go ahead and slice this up and you'll see that it breaks it down to like everything that it's going to be doing and uh, it tells you the time that it's going to take the amount of filament all that cool stuff if that's something that you're interested in and you'll notice that it's about an hour time on these things to get these done so once we get that done, I'm just gonna go over here and tell it to print it. And I'm gonna go right there and I'm gonna select a different color. That's the cool thing about having the AMS is you can go there and whatever colors you have selected, you can just pick from those and run it. And down at the bottom, those are also the little pre-tests and stuff that you can enable. And you can also turn on the time lapse. I've turned that off because I'm just not using it. And uh, it does tend to spin slow things down a little bit because the machine has to stop and take a picture after every layer so uh, we're just going to send that over to the machine and uh, give it a little time to get started and then we're going to walk in there and uh, let you guys see what it looks like so you can see there i've got the white green black and orange filament all right guys so here's the file that we just started uh, this is going to be for the three actually four uh, little hold downs for the CNC. Like I said, these are gonna be made from PLA, so these aren't gonna be as robust or as strong as the ones from the factory. But I just wanted to show you guys how you can go about just reaching out, finding that file that you need, whether it be from, you know, uh, Thingiverse or countless other sites. Bamboo Labs has their own little library, their own little online place that you can obtain files. A lot of the files uh, on this machine as, as we speak uh, came from there. Uh, I, as you can see, I do have my AMS mounted on top of the machine. Uh, this bracket and adapter and everything that holds that up there all were printed with the machine. 
uh, downloaded from Bamboo Labs is uh, little, uh, basically their little file uh, location. Uh, this little tray that catches all of the discharge from the, uh, from the filament swap, that is also a file that I downloaded from there, as well as this little cover here that more or less prevents those little pieces from bouncing everywhere and, and winding up stuck down in this little crevice. So, oh, and also this little holder for the, the work surface. I did order an extra work surface when I got my machine. And reason being, when I had the uh, Ender before, I, after a, a lot of use, especially if you use the same location on the bed over and over, which I try to avoid now by moving things around, I had actually peeled a little bit of the work surface off of the other one. So I just went ahead and got a spare, just in case I damaged this one. Uh, it wouldn't put my machine out of service for a while. Uh, with the A1, you do have the option of getting the A1 without the AMS, and you would basically just use this and just use a single roll of filament. Uh, the only big difference with that is going to be your limited one. You're limited to only one color filament. For me, I don't do a lot of multicolored filament uh, printing, but the thing that I like about the AMS is you do have that option of having two rolls of the same color filament, and in the event that the job that you're running uses up that roll of filament, you can set the machine to default over to the other roll and continue to use it. That's gonna do two things. One, it's gonna avoid uh, your, your print not completing because it's gonna en enable it to switch to a different roll and continue going. And two, it's gonna enable you to use all of that filament uh, without having to worry about that because uh, you know, with my previous machine, you would have to like just basically take what was left on a spool, take it off of the machine in order to prevent uh, having a, a, a print job stop midway because you ran out of filament. So the AMS, even if you don't want to do multiple colored things, it allows you that. It also allows you, if you're printing in uh, one type of material, it also allows you to use uh, they have filaments that are specifically made for support structure. Some of them are either water, water soluble so that you can just put your, your print in water and it'll dissolve it off of it. I actually do have some of that that I haven't tested yet. So there's a lot of uses for the AMS, but for me, I use it mostly. It is kind of handy to be able to switch from the green to the orange to the black to the white without having to mess with the machine. You saw how easy it was in the software to simply select which color filament I wanted to use and send the job. And I sent that from the shop, guys. This is my little desk uh, office area here inside the house. And that's another thing that I like about the way the Bamboo Labs works. Uh, using some of the other machines, you have that capability, but the one that I had, it just wasn't quite as smooth. Uh, it didn't work quite as, as fluid as what I've been having it work with the, uh, the Bamboo Labs. But I printed lots of little things, uh, including the toolbox, uh, countless other little small little knickknacks and uh, odd things. Uh, one cool thing about Bamboo also is they do send you this little assortment of uh, basically just a little color chart of all the different types, all the different colors of uh, filament that are available which is pretty cool. Uh, I'll never use all of these colors, but you know, if I decide to, it's always there. So let's get back out to the shop guys and uh, let this job finish. But before I do, I'm gonna get up there and get you some uh, video of the machine actually working on this project. All right guys, as you can see, the machine's really, it's, it's really fast compared to uh, uh, what I was used to with the other machine. Uh, everything's really smooth. Uh, the testing that it does, it actually tests itself for basically the resonance and the, the vibrations and so forth. And it takes that into consideration uh, when it's running these files. So it's really, really cool. And uh, it makes 3D printing a lot more enjoyable, in my opinion. All right, guys. So, yes, I keep the 3D printer inside the house. And that's for a couple of reasons. You may not can tell it, but this is a wood workshop. I do sanding. I do a lot of things out here that generate a lot of dust. I also have three cats that live in here. So an opened air 3D printer, you know, with the, 
with all the moving parts exposed and all that, it's not a good idea around, you know, curious cats. And also, I'm not a real fan of all the dust being on the, you know, on the filament and being on the work area and that type of thing. So for now, I keep a 3D printer inside the house near my work, work area there, and it works out pretty well for me, especially with the ability to monitor, check in on it from here in the shop, as well as to be able to remotely launch it. Because basically, the machine's always on. It goes to sleep, it just sits there, when I get ready to send it a job, I send it the job. It wakes up, does the job, and goes back to sleep. So in my opinion, guys, 3D printing is one of those things. Like I said, it's, it's, it's not like Bamboo Labs invented 3D printing, but to me, they've made it a lot easier. They are to 3D printing what Windows was to home PCs. You know, Windows didn't invent the computer. They just made it to where people could actually use it without being computer engineers or computer programmers. And I think that's where Bamboo Lab has excelled recently is they have implemented certain, uh, there's, there's certain tests and configurations and calibrations that the machine does itself that prevents a lot of the problems that it used to. It was up to the end user to be able to look at that print and go, hey, I need to adjust this or I need to adjust that. Now Bamboo has figured out ways and kind of built that into their machines to where that the machine knows what to look for. It finds those, those things that cause the anomalies, adjusts for them to correct them. And so it's a lot less user input to come out with a, a printable project. Now it does add some time to your print because you have to allow it to run those tests before it does each print. And if you were doing 50 prints in a day, you, you might not wanna, you may wanna turn those off. And I showed you uh, in the software where you can disengage those. But if you're like me and you're only printing maybe like once a week, sometimes two or three times a week, it's probably a good idea to leave those on because changes in temperature, temperature variations, uh, you know, the fan, whether your wife has the ceiling fan on or whether she has it off, all of those things could come into play. So it's never a bad idea if you're not pressed for time to just let the machine go ahead and run through the full gamut of tests, set itself up. And so far, so far guys, I have had zero failed prints and everything has came out exactly the way, the way I wanted it to. All right guys, so a little time later, uh, actually it was about an hour uh, for me to print four of these guys and I have a part. So that's one of the things that I like about 3D printing is to be able to make those little parts and components and little things that you need around the shop more so than trying to do uh, you know, builds per se. Now, as uh, I get better with it, as my 3D uh, modeling skills get better, I'm sure the projects will get a little more complex as we go. But if you're one of those folks that wants to get into it that don't wanna have to learn a whole lot about the physics that go into it, uh, like I said, I think the Bamboo Labs uh, software, machine, the whole ecosystem that they've built works pretty well to allow people to, to create things like this, you know, because I didn't have to design this. I downloaded it, sliced it, and printed it uh, with just minimal knowledge of the slicing software. And as you progress, of course, you can, you can study up and learn more and more about it and be able to do more complex jobs. But so if, you, if you're interested in one of these things, guys, I'll be dropping links down below uh, to the uh, Bamboo's website for the machine that I have, as well as some of the you know, parts and filaments and all that cool stuff. But uh, I think it's a really cool machine, especially for the price point and the results that I'm getting, I actually like a lot better with a lot less input from me, the user, and a lot less knowledge required. Because Bamboo Labs, like I said, between the software and the hardware, they've almost got a system that takes the human error out of the process. So uh, yeah, but anyway guys, that's my preliminary review after a little over a month of having the machine and using it and making all kinds of cool things. And this is just one of many uh, uses for the machine. So check those links out down below. And until next time guys, be safe and have a good day.